Hey everybody, welcome to the Krista and Ed show. I'm Ed. I'm Krista. And we want to welcome Steve Bardetsko. Thank you so much for coming and uh, talking to us and letting us interview you today. So for our listeners, if you uh, don't know anything about Steve, he's uh, the founder of herocrafting.com. He's a performance coach at ClickFunnels. Um, he's a master of changing belief through story. For over seven years, Steve has been a digital marketing coach and solution provider for entrepreneurs, advertisers looking to create lasting connections to their ideal audience. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Having successfully run multi-million dollar marketing campaigns, Steve has learned some of the best practices and processes in creating a memorable customer service experience. Whether it is helping an entrepreneur overcome their own internal limiting beliefs, providing easily actionable solutions to overcoming customer objections, or creating a truly meaningful customer storyline, Steve is the go-to source, we know that, in creating breakthroughs for marketers looking to make an impact on those they serve. So welcome, Steve. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and in honor of you, I uh, pulled a <laughs> bow tie out of out of my archives, and I was like, okay, actually, uh, you're I'm, looking today, huh? <laughs> I'm so full of all the ideas here. So we are so excited. We know that um, we've gotten to know you better, like in the last year, and uh, we're super excited that you're one of the coaches as well in the Two Comma Club. So. Um, we've even from afar, you know, always plugged into and saw the value that you provide to the team and the group. So we're like, we need to talk to this guy and bring him to our viewers and listeners. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your journey and, um, where you're at today? Oh, absolutely. Well, I tell you what, about 10 years ago, I was in of all things, auto glass and how that goes with digital marketing. I... I actually have no idea how that goes. Around. <laughs> There's not a natural transition. I, I will say what happened is, is in Autoglass, we lost our major client. We lost about 50% of our business. And how we got back on track as a company is we actually brought in a super affiliate. We brought in someone that was able to help drive lots of traffic to us. And frankly, that was my introduction into digital marketing. And for me, it, it was almost as, as though it was a godsend. It, it was wow. meant to be. At that point, I was down the rabbit hole and off to the races. Of, ah, I have to learn this. How in the world does this work and what can I do with it? It's wonderful. So it, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, since then, since I've got into digital marketing, I've done any and everything, frankly, everywhere from digital marketing coach, which I love. Uh, I've also done e-commerce, selling physical products. I've gotten into, let's see, information sites and affiliate work, blogs, uh, even doing some Google AdSense and Facebook advertising. And, well, unfortunately, sorry to say, uh, I'll admit it, though, I, I got into a good bit of what's considered the black hat side of the marketing. In other words, not the type of marketing that is recommended in any way, shape, or form. A lot of the folks in that type of the industry, they are really not in it for the, the best interest of the consumer. And, you know, one day uh, I actually woke up and realized I'm not willing to tell my family and friends what I do for a living. And that day was, I mean, it was a punch in the gut. It was a matter of who in the world have I become yeah. that I'm doing this willingly. Yeah. And since then, I struck back out on my own in search of that right way to do business. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thrilled that since then, I have found not only a, a tribe, a second family mm -hmm. that I love being around. I have found a mission a software and a marketer that I truly believe in and that being ClickFunnels and Russell Brunson. And I also have found what I love to do the most since then. And that happens to be stories, the attractive character and changing belief. That is what gives me the most amount of thrill and being able to share that 
with other marketers, with other entrepreneurs, I would do that all day long. And, and you know what I do? Do that all day long. So I have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Well, that's great. You know, like it's interesting you're talking about that because that's really the core of marketing. And I had an ad agency for almost a decade. In a lot of cases, you don't really think about this part. You're like, okay, this is the avatar of who we're going after. This is the channels we're going to advertise, but not really taking the client necessarily and going, okay. Through that journey. Yeah. Or, and, and, and just that attractive character part. Do you maybe want to talk a little bit more? Cause that is probably the single most powerful thing in marketing today. If, if you can communicate that correctly to your ideal audience. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, it all started from my own personal journey and my own desire to, to get beyond my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I, been stuck in a way 30 plus years of my life I'd been stuck in this limiting false belief I I had convinced myself I'm an introvert I'm not able to go speak to someone I'm awkward I'm unable to continue conversation I'm not willing to put myself forward in any way shape or form so I, I this actually as a matter of fact it would manifest itself in a physical response the first day of a grade school for example even every first day every every year of high school heck even getting into new groups new work situations would always terrify me yeah. i would have this social anxiety as though i was nervous all the time and have this this almost shake or completely clam up mm -hmm. and so I, I set out with this intention, with this purpose of, there has to be a way for me to overcome my own objections. There has to way, uh, excuse me, has to be a way for me to to get beyond that comfort zone, and there has to be a way that I can then use what I've learned and what the knowledge that I've gained and give that to someone else. If I'm having this issue, I was convinced there have to be other people that are having the same problem. And that's who I want to help, is myself and everyone like me. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, I love that. I honestly, like, I feel like you're speaking to me because I, I would say that I've probably, it's been over 15 years now that I've been consciously, you know, aware of that with myself and trying to still continue to break that down. It's not easy when you've spent, you know, more than that, like, years telling yourself that story do you know what i mean so that's amazing and all the dynamics that go with that like you think of like networking and stuff Before. in business where it's it's these opportunities to develop relationships you know early on in our relationship we would you know i had a ton of networking events she's like why do we have to go to that so her 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 well, i talked myself out of it she because gets stressed i out. would be like panicking but i wouldn't tell him right? Because yeah. you, you feel silly. You're like, yeah. why am I so, you know, um, but now I'm like, okay, people, if I feel like it. So I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> right? If she feels like it, that's probably the best way to put it, right? Yeah. 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 One of the most fascinating parts on that, that, that I realized then adapted for myself and then love to share as mm -hmm. a result is, is really what are the true impact that mm -hmm. stories, that narrative have on not only society and us as, as humans in history, but really us as individuals. What is it that stories are able to do? And you look, for example, at, at the negative association. Uh, a good friend of mine spoke to me about this. He says, look, if, if there's some event that happens to you, there is not a, a good or bad association. To that it's it's an event that's it yeah right? you get a car accident your your dog gets run over by a car your, your child gets sick whatever the case may be these are events that happen they're not good or bad yeah when we assign mm -hmm. a story mm -hmm. behind that event as far as this is the cause of it when we assign this story uh, uh, as though here is the result. This event happened. Therefore, I am like this, right? Mm -hmm. 
these events that happened to me when I was younger. And I assigned this story of I'm unable to put myself forward. I'm unable, unwilling to go make friends. I'm shy. I'm introverted. I would assign these stories. And the fascinating part, one of the most fascinating parts about this is as you can see how uh, detrimental those stories can be, the reverse is true. Those stories can also be used to craft the powerful version of yourself, who you've always meant, been meant to be, and who you've, you've held back from yourself, right? Yeah. And the human mind thinks in this narrative pattern. I, I tell you what, let me ask you two. Okay. When you dream, do you think, do you dream in colors? Do you dream in smells or emotions or instead are you watching or even inside a narrative story in your dream wow yeah i yeah they're stories they really are they're only stories these stories are what drive us to yeah. achieve what we see ourselves what we perceive ourselves to be yeah, yeah. right you know, and it's, it's the same way that manifests in these dreams, and you can use that same story structure then, not only to help your own development, mm-hmm. but also to reach that ideal customer yeah. that you want to serve. Mm-hmm. It's funny, when you were talking about that, I was thinking of my dreams, and a lot of times I can't remember the dream, but I remember the feeling of the dream, mm-hmm. and that is how powerful stories are, right? I love that. That's so awesome. And you know what? My dreams do end like movies, which is weird. I think I trained myself that way when I was a kid. <laughs> so it's black at the end, and then there's all these like <laughs> games of things. I, love well, I don't know if that happens to anybody else, but every single one of me filled in by here's Krista. I did yeah. the same with all of I don't know what it says, but I'm just yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, through my journey, our journey especially in the last little while and I'm learning new things and thinking of things in the context of story. Cause Chris is like, Hey, you've had several businesses. You've had lots of good things happen. You've had bad things happen. And what it's starting to do is pull out all of these stories of things that happen. And now with purpose, I'm identifying them as something that's created uh, a belief in me. Mm-hmm. So if it was bad, a limiting belief, like something this happened, it's kind of like when you're a kid and the stove is boiling and you touched it, you remember that, right? Um, and now you know better than to do it. But I think we have all these stories of things that happen in our life that end up being in our consciousness that limit us because of that experience and it happened once. I mean, breaking down those false beliefs is, you know, magic. And I'm going to thank you right now for doing that for people and for their businesses, especially because that is one of the things that holds, I would say probably one of the biggest things that hold people back in life. Um, And once you can like start to break through that, it's so free. You would know that yourself because you've obviously, you know, done it and you still, um, you know, work through that for yourself. And it's like, once you get there, you're like, I know what you're saying. It's like everybody needs to feel this way, right? It's so freeing. So it's beautiful. For me, that, that's really been the goal. It, it's, it's almost uh, I've discovered this prize. Yeah. And now, oh, I, I can either keep it all to myself yeah. or share it with someone else. And there's so much more magic. Yeah. When you share that, mm-hmm. when you share that, that mm-hmm. treasure, when you share that gift, mm-hmm. it's a, so much more rewarding that way. Can I ask you a question about the bow tie? Yes. What's the story behind the bow tie? Oh. Every time I see you, you have a bow tie on. So like when you're at home, do you always still wear a bow tie or is this part of your attractive character? Oh, good question. That's, that's a really great question. <laughs> to answer that, let me tell you a story. <laughs> so a true story. This happens to be a few years ago. Uh, as a matter of fact, back when I was in the black hat industry, mm-hmm. there, there was a industry event that would occur every year, every January. 
and I would go to these and I would always feel out of place. I knew the folks that I worked with and my friends. However, I was not certain of whom else to speak to, how to go about it. And I was searching for, how is it that I put myself out there? How is it that I do not feel awkward doing it? Uh, and one year getting ready to go to this conference on happenstance, I was in a store, I happened to buy a bow tie and I figured, well, look, it's on sale. This might be fun. I grabbed it, brought it with me to the event and one evening decided to put it on. And I tell you what, it was as though magic was waiting for me. Conversation piece, yeah. All of a sudden people started coming to me and asking me about it and opening up to me. And I felt more free that I was then able to go speak to them without these ambitions. I got out of my own head and really just enjoyed the moment. And since then, it's been a matter of, holy smokes, it's almost <laughs> magic when I put it on. It's, it's almost as though it's a hero suit of armor that I'm donning of, now I get to be who I really am instead of, held back by these these false beliefs yeah. so i really have just carried that forward now to me it's a lot of fun yes and, and it's certainly it becomes that the centerpiece of conversation it becomes that memorable idea in someone's head which is never a bad idea in marketing look your job your goal is to stand out from the crowd yeah. in the, and hey uh, how many people are actually walking around with the bow tie on? There's a very few. Even with a t-shirt. Like, you always have it. You always look so spiffy, I have to say. Well, <laughs> I have envy. <laughs> so how many do you own, for real? Like, oh, wow. a, a dresser full? You know, it, there are a number of them. I, and I, I get pained any time that one gets frayed or broken in oh. such a way. I have to throw it away. Okay. As though I've lost a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you name them? No. This one happens to be one of my favorites, though. This is this is uh, uh, maybe one of the favorite of the bunch. Aside from the one that frankly features me, that's my favorite one. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Um, so. I know you have hero craft as well. So is that the process of taking somebody through? Like, so if a person is uh, wanting your help, you're, you're helping them kind of find their attractive character and lead them down a process. Can you maybe talk about that a little bit? Sure. I, I tell you what, would it be all right if I took you through an exercise? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to, I'll put you on the spot here. You may not have something available. Okay. Yeah available and, and so I'm, I'll, I'll uh, wing it a little bit with you if you do not have a pen and paper handy. I we do. always do. I've already been taking notes. Bam. All right. So here's what I'm going to mention is this was actually back in, at Funnel Hacking Live uh, who I, I had gone to Russell Brunson and ClickFunnels, the Funnel Hacking Live with a completely different idea, a business idea in mind. And, well, you guys know how Funnel Hacking Live is. Sometimes you walk out of that, and it's as though the, the skies have opened up, and you have a whole new appreciation for life and a new business idea, and you're charging forward. And that's exactly what happened to me. Mm -hmm. However, I ran into an issue. Mm -hmm. I said, look, I know now who is it that I want to serve, how do I want to go about this? Mm -hmm. and how do I bring someone the same realizations that I've been having? Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been so long in what I call the widget business, right? Yeah. It didn't really matter what it was. It was a product. It was throwaway. I didn't have any passion behind it. Yeah. And so I went the opposite way. I thought to myself, all right, what do I have? What am I passionate about? What can I share with someone? Mm -hmm. And the immediate answer occurred to me. It's the same one that has occurred to me really all my life where I went 
for companionship, where I went for courage, where I went for adventure growing up. And those were the hero stories that I grew up with. Right? See, I'm a child of the 80s, so I grew up with He-Man and, and uh, G.I. Joe and even Star Wars, right? Lord of the Rings. This is what I grew up with. This is my comfort zone. And I thought, how is it that I'm able to go about this? Why is it that hero stories mean so much to me? Mm-hmm. And so I was curious. What is it that heroes mean to us? And so here's my challenge for you that I'd like to ask. Mm-hmm. Would you do me a favor? On the top of that paper, and anyone watching or listening, mm-hmm. grab a pen and a paper, and at the top of a sheet, write the phrase, what I think of a hero. What I think of a hero. Okay. Okay. And then I want you to take about 30 seconds and write the first things that come to mind. What do you think of a hero? It might be a sentence. It might be just words. There's no right or wrong answer here. Ultimately, we each have our own ideas of what a hero is. And so I'm curious, in your point of view, what do you think of a hero? Okay, well, I have to tell you, like, this is the nerd in me coming out. Like, I was a a comic book collector as a little kid like I was more of like an investor actually he has a box is full of comics. yeah but what I did is I, I would say okay any one through four I'll take them not to say there's the that was kind of the entrepreneurial side like I was trying to invest in you the, the, the you know number one spider-man or whatever right but yeah I so I had this fascination with uh with heroes you know growing up right and yeah. So what do you think about that? Came to mind. Okay, so don't read my notes. Wow. <laughs> uh, so what I think of a hero, they save the day. Um, someone to look up to. And something I've always noticed is that they always have struggles that they overcome. So you admire them for them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Nice to have that yourself. Mine are overcome, they overcome obstacles, they're inspiring, they're relatable, and they want to help. I think both of those are absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. You notice how different Mm -hmm. those are, Mm -hmm. and yet... The same. They're the same, right? You you, you can certainly see each other's point of view of, oh, absolutely, that's also a hero. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated by this what what is it about heroes and so i started doing research into this concept and i came across the book a hero of a thousand faces Mm -hmm. by joseph campbell Mm -hmm. now you may not be familiar with the book however i'm sure you're familiar with the concept you see because joseph campbell is the first one that brought up the idea of the hero's journey okay And the hero's journey, certainly anyone who follows Russell Brunson knows about the hero's journey in this case. Mm -hmm. And the hero's journey, how similar it was for me as I was doing this research, Mm -hmm. how similar it was for me as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So I looked at these, these similarities. You see, the hero, like an entrepreneur, has a call to adventure. There's Mm -hmm. something more out there beyond being trapped in a cubicle, feeling depressed all the time. There's got to be something more to life, something more I can give, something more rewarding out there. But often the entrepreneur, like the hero, is held back by a wall of some sort, a threshold, right? And ultimately it's from the unknown world, excuse me, the, the known world that they live in, they're held back from the unknown world of entrepreneurship. Yes. How often this happens, right? Yeah. And ultimately, as humans, what this is touching on, it's our comfort zone. Mm-hmm. We're trapped in this comfort zone, and we have this wall that's holding us back from the unknown world, mm-hmm. right? The discomfort, mm-hmm. living outside of yourself. 
Yeah. And it's not until you get past this wall in this case, the entrepreneur, the hero, then it's not as though the journey's done and then the hero then reaches what's called the road of trials. This is where competition exists. In business, for example, this is where your competitors are. This is where the, the naysayers are. So often they're friends and family. This oh, one, you should just go back to this. It, this is not going to work. Absolutely. Go back and get a real job, right? This is also where the haters live online, certainly as marketers. Mm -hmm. the, the ones that say, uh, you know, you don't belong. You don't know what you're talking about. This, this person's a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. You notice, though, those haters, they're never the ones putting themselves out there, are they? No. 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 It's fun to sit behind the keyboard yeah. and stone those that way. Yeah. The hero then reaches the abyss, the last part where they feel, I am unable to go on any further. I should just go back to where I was. I should just go back to the job that I had, right? I, 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 it's time for me to go back to that comfort zone. Until you get past that last remaining enemy, if you will, yourself, You'll always be trapped in this almost. Yeah. Once you get past the abyss, the hero then reaches the prize. So often, though, the prize isn't always what we thought it was, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You thought maybe you were just coming for monetary rewards. Mm -hmm. Instead, the hero, the entrepreneur, becomes transformed in some way. Michael Haig and Russell Brunson refer to this as the hero's two journeys. Yeah. You went for one prize, but you were transformed into something completely different. And we just spoke on this a moment ago. Mm -hmm. You thought you were going for one prize. When you got it, you realized, I have to share this with someone else. Yeah. And now comes the question of the hero's return, going back to the the real world, the comfort zone, if you will, in bringing this prize and transformation to someone else to then bring them on the journey with us. Mm -hmm. Now, in my fantastic art skills, you would never guess I actually went to art school with this. Here's my rendition for you here. See, the hero up here going on the call to adventure, going through the wall, the known world to the unknown world on past the road of trials before they reach the abyss. You know, how, notice how far away the hero is? Yeah. By the way, no wonder you feel like you need to go back home. You yeah. need to go back to the job that you know. And it's not until you get past the abyss where you reach the prize and the transformation. And then comes the question of the return. Now, I got to ask you both, where might you put yourself on this? <laughs> Hmm. I, I, I'm going to, um, I feel like, okay. Yeah, we're in the abyss. I think so. We're like really <laughs> close to the pride. No, actually, we might be transformation. No, I don't know. I don't know. I could like see everything as we were going through just even the last The last year. year, year and a half. I mean, the first Funnel Hacking Live we went to, which was 2018, we both went there and we're running our separate businesses. Yeah happily and fine. And since then, you know, we've sold them. <laughs> We're on this whole other journey because yeah. we've gone through different things in our businesses and realized yeah. exactly what you're talking about. I would almost say we, we've been in the abyss for a while. <laughs> and uh, and the, prize, the, the prize has been us galvanizing the direction and what we want to give back. That's the part of the transformation, and that's what we're working. Well, and understanding that we're doing it with purpose now, where we didn't before. And as you're talking about this, you know, I love that you did this because, oh my God, I had a nice hero outfit on throughout that story. <laughs> but I was thinking, oh my God, how horrible would this story end if I just turned around and went back? Imagine if people paid to go to that movie, and then I'm like, nah, I'm done. So thank you. 
the good part is you're already beyond that part of the comfort zone and you're yeah. getting used to that discomfort. Some folks though, some folks get stuck here. The refusal of the call, even before the wall, they get stuck in their own comfort zone. Yeah. The refusal of the call, you see, it does not happen in every hero story, though it does happen often enough. You'll recognize. I'll give you an example. In Star Wars, Luke is told by Obi-Wan Kenobi, hey, we have to go save the princess. We're going to fight the Empire. And he says, I have to go tend my crops. Mm -hmm. Frodo, of course, is told, Frodo, you're holding the one ring of power. It needs to be destroyed. And he tells Gandalf, I don't want it. You take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter, or Harry Potter is told, Harry, you are a wizard. And Harry says, I'm not a wizard. I'm just Harry. I'm just Harry. You see, he says, I'm not special. I'm solely a regular person. But these, that regular person is where the heroes are born. Yes. Yeah. Rising up to the occasion, stepping outside of their comfort zone, taking that risk, yeah. and then bringing that to someone else. You see, the interesting thing about the hero's journey and what Joseph Campbell discovered, Joseph Campbell didn't conjure up this idea. He didn't simply make the hero's journey so that you and I would have something to market and tell our customers about. He didn't create the hero's journey so that Hollywood would have the next blockbuster film. He didn't create it so that a novelist would have the next Harry Potter series. No, 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 no. You see, what Joseph Campbell did was he researched the stories, the myths, and the legends from humanity. He noticed that the sh same stories that drive us, the same stories that our elders would utilize to tell us as humans what to do, what not to do, yeah. how to act. Joseph Campbell discovered these are blueprints, themes that happen again and again. Mm -hmm. These same events occur not only as entrepreneurs, but as humans. We have call to adventure. We have the comfort zone, the wall that we must leap. We have the road of trials that we go beyond. If we even get there, some are stuck in that refusal of the call. Yeah. The hero reaches the abyss, the choice of do I go forward? Yeah. Then they reach the prize. Then the hero becomes transformed. And now is the question of the return. Do they bring it back to someone else or keep it to themselves? You see, Joseph Campbell discovered these myths, these legends, and stories mm -hmm. happen through humanity mm -hmm. in these blueprints to tell us where we've been and where we are going. The same way you can point to you yourself on that map, on that hero's journey, and say as entrepreneurs, I am here. The same way you are able to look at it and say, I've been there, yeah. I'm going there. Yeah. These heroes and myths and legends, these stories that drive us as humans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are blueprints for us to live by. Yes. When they're blueprints for us to live by, that means, look, they are written for us and by us. These stories are stories about humanity. Yeah which means they're stories about you and I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which would make you what in your story? Hero. That would make you your hero. Now here's what I want you to do for me. I knew on the top of that paper, I asked you to write the phrase, what I think of a hero. I want you to cross out the word hero. And above it, I want you to write myself. And now read your list again. So someone who saves the day, someone to look up to, someone who has struggles that they overcome so you can admire them. Hmm. Yeah. 
you have written for yourself where you've been and what you aim to achieve. Yeah. And Krista, yourself? Um, overcomes obstacles, inspiring, relatable, and wants to help. I'm like, that. that's, I would describe myself that way, but I wasn't thinking of myself when I wrote that. So that's mm. amazing. Yeah. Well, you live your life in accordance to that, to achieve that which you just said. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm going to write a few more things. Super smart, <laughs> funny. No. <laughs> Just kidding. That's amazing. Thank you for that. Wow. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. My pleasure. This is what I discovered. This is the prize that I found and realized how much it transformed me. And I have to bring it back to others. Yeah. I have to help others through that journey yeah that's what drives me yeah that's amazing i i was gonna ask our next our next question what is what is your superpower but i feel like you just told yeah. us <laughs> this has never happened before you're just simply awesome thank you yeah yeah wow yeah, yeah. that's a great that's and a that, that goes back to the whole narrative of like the things that you've seen and experienced in your own stories in your life mm -hmm. You created this belief system of yourself as well as that false belief system, right? And how do you rewrite that? How do you good I purpose? Just, I love what it did. It did a mind shift for me because we often very easily see in other people what we don't see in ourselves. So this exercise was exactly that, forcing you to go like, whoa. Like, as you were going through this, I started feeling guilty, to be honest with you, of, you know, all the women and people that I've led and looked up to me and throughout my journey with the boutique thinking, oh my gosh, I just left them. I just left them, <laughs> you know? Not guilty, but I could see the scenarios mm -hmm. and I didn't understand. I'm like, why, I'm not that great, Where? why, right? But I guess I was helping them, yeah, wow. In their journey. Yeah, leading them as that hero's mentor. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my day is complete. I just spent the whole weekend at uh, in the mountains with five of my girlfriends. And we've never, it's never worked out like that for us to get together. And it was such a beautiful, peaceful, spiritual, calming weekend. And um, this just topped it all off. <laughs> Thank you to be of service. Thank you. So, um, do you have any questions for us? I mean, you've already kind of gave us a, a project that we've done, but is there anything you want to ask us? So now I'm curious, as you look through this, as you look through the exercise I just took you through, and now I'm going to ask you to reflect on who do you see yourself as? Who have you modeled? Who is your hero that you've thought maybe for years, adding your case, of course, with comic books, who did you always idolize as that's the hero of anyone I wish I could Captain America. <laughs> I mean, in the sense of like comics and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Interesting. Hmm. Like a real, like comic superhero? Tell me. You tell me. Look, you could your hero may be someone like Oprah. Your hero may be someone like Gandhi. I, I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. That's a hard one. I honestly feel like I've been searching my whole life for a mentor, for a hero. And sometimes it makes me sad that I feel like I never had one, right? So that's why the community we're part of is so... Um, is so special to me right because i'm like wow there's this whole world out there that i didn't know um so what i say i've had one my whole life no but i do have a very good friend that i've had for i don't know my early 20s who was with us this weekend mm -hmm. that i absolutely admire 100 percent. and we've gone through many things together and we've grown up into like mothers, you know, wives, um, women together, right? And we were at different stages, 
you know, helping each other through that. And now, mm-hmm. like, I just look at her and I'm like, what? How'd you get so far ahead of me? You know how to cook. You're like, <laughs> like, everything is perfect. <laughs> but not in that sense. But I really, she is my hero right now anyways. And, like, she yeah. comes from a war country. You know, we all have stories. But she's still a positive, beautiful person. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would say I've been fortunate that I've I've been on the lookout my whole life and have found mentors that have reciprocated relationships. Uh, my uncle, um, uh, you know, uh, in the jewelry trade, and I spent a couple of years working under him, and then a fellow in the garment industry in New York who took me under his wing for several years, and then another fellow who owned a chain of stores in in Canada who really took me under his wing and kind of taught me business and you know what I mean? So I feel like I've been, I've been fortunate and blessed with mentors who I guess I never thought of them as heroes, but in a way they are because you model what they're doing. And obviously there's good and bad. And uh, you know, you kind of try to weed out the stuff that's bad and take the good and you know, like anything, right? Absolutely. Incredible. These are what these mentors do for us is they fill that, hero's mentor role, right? The same sort of way a Gandalf character would appear, the same sort of way a Obi-Wan character or a Dumbledore character would appear to. Who yeah. is that hero that who you model yourself after in your thoughts and your actions of, of this is what I see my potential as and this is where I would like to go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. I'm never going to see the world the same again. (laughs) In a very good way. Yeah. So um, if our viewers, sorry. I hope I made an impression then. Oh my gosh, you you totally did. Like, seriously. So if if our viewers want to connect with you and and listeners want to connect with you, how how best should they do that? Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, I'm on Instagram. Stevie B Hero at Stevie B Hero. That's S T E V E Y B Hero. I'm on Facebook, of course, there are not many of Steve Partetsko on Facebook. If you find the one with the bow tie, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'd, I'd love to have you stop by at herocrafting.com and I'd love to help you however you need it thank you awesome appreciate it thanks steve my pleasure all right thank you so much for joining us bye bye